There's big breaking news out of Winnipeg. And let's bring on John Hodge, if you don't mind, from 3downnation.com, one of the top CFL insiders. John, correct me if I may, the biggest news of the week out of Winnipeg will be this. Sarah Orleski leaving the CFL on TSN to go work for the Winnipeg Jets. Am I right? I think you're absolutely right there, Roddy. I mean, you know, Sarah Orleski, I, I don't know her well personally, but obviously we've encountered each other, you know, in, in, in professional situations covering this league. And uh, at the end of the day, I don't think there's anybody better than Sarah. She, she's phenomenal at her job. She's done it at a world-class level since she joined the CFL on TSN in 2008. And I know, for one, I'm going to be sad, not just obviously as, uh, as someone who gets to see her in the press box every now and again, but also as someone who just has a tremendous appreciation for her work. Uh, she'll be sorely missed. The good news is she announced on her Twitter account that her final game is the Banjo Bowl. So if people are looking for some closure with Sarah's tenure at the CFL on TSN, they still have a chance to get a little, little bit of it early next month. Well, yes, it is. Uh, well, the CFL's loss is the Jets' gain, there's no doubt. Um, so, hey, I was looking at you guys' power rankings. Uh, listen, you got to be happy, John, with the quality of CFL ball, particularly coming out of Week 10. Your hits, I would think, are hopping. It's pretty good times on the CFL on the field. I, I would agree. I, I think there's always room for, for improvement, of course, with the on-field product. But at the end of the day... I mean, the CFL just saw its highest scoring week of the season, just under 60 points per game. You know, that's a number that the CFL League office, I'm sure, loves to see. We also had the highest scoring game individually. In my opinion, you know, arguably the best game of the season, the 41-40 come from behind victory by the BC Lions. I say arguably best game because I still think that the 35-28 game that Winnipeg and Calgary played a couple weeks ago might have been even better, but... You know, to me, I do think that we have seen a better quality of football this season. I think the quarterbacking has certainly improved. I think that the kicking game has certainly improved. I think we've seen more big plays. Again, always room for improvement, but certainly coming out of a 2021 season uh, that was you know, saw a lot of, of criticism, quite frankly, from people in and around the league, fans across the country looking at social media saying, hey, like, wh- where is the CFL that we used to know? We used to see big plays, lots of points. We're not seeing it as much of it this year. I think 2022 has been a nice rebound for the league and set up maybe a, a bit of a nicer foundation for what this league could be in three or five years. Tell me, please, how you guys come to a consensus on your power rankings. And by the way, I agree with them pretty much every week. The CFL.ca is not so much. You guys, I do. But you got the BC Lions number one in the CFL right now over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Was that a hard... Uh vote or how do you guys come up with that well it was it was extremely close Roddy the way that we do it is we have all of our contributors rank the teams from one to nine independently and then we put them all together and average them all out and so uh, I believe it was five of our contributors had Winnipeg at number one and six including myself had the BC Lions at number one and that is the uh that's just how close it was. It was literally one vote. I, I can only speak for myself, but personally, I was happy to put the BC Lions there because first of all, most importantly, I think they have the best player in the CFL right now, who is Nathan Rourke. I think Nathan Rourke, you know, maybe, maybe a month ago, there was a conversation about who was having the better year, Rourke or Zach Kolaris. I don't think that's, an, that's a conversation that could realistically be had anymore. That's no disrespect to Zach Kolaris. Zach Kolaris is having clearly a better season than every other starting quarterback in the CFL. But right now, Nathan work stands alone at one. There's a gap. Zach Kalara stands alone, stands alone at two. And then there's another wide gap to everybody else. In my view, the other reason is I think the BC lions have really started to come together defensively that front seven, they went out and added a bunch of key pieces in free agency. Then they all got hurt, but it hasn't slowed them down. They've really seen production from Matthew Betts, uh, Tim Bonner, uh, Obam Guachim off the end. The, the linebacking core hasn't missed a beat since Bola Combo went out. And, and to me, they are the team to beat right now. I appreciate that they lost to the Bombers five, six weeks ago, but power rankings are not standings. If you want standings, look at the standings. If you want power rankings, come to Three Down Nation. Ah, I get it, and I love I love the debate. It's one of the things that makes our business so great. Clay in Brandon says to me, "Ask John what he thought of the Alouettes D line last Thursday." Al's won in Munch in Winnipeg, twenty to seventeen. Is there a story there, John? 
First off, shout out to Brandon. I lived there for many years. Um, but I will also say I, I, I was very impressed with the Alouette's defensive line. This Alouette's defensive line was basically gone out and purchased. They brought in, you know, Mike Moore. They brought in uh, Armando Sewell. They brought in Nick Usher, all from the Edmonton Elks. And then they, they brought in Avery Ellis from the Ottawa Red Blacks. It's four free agent additions up there. I think they technically traded for Armando Sewell, but that's neither here nor there. Um, to me, it's been a pretty mediocre unit all season. You know, in a nine-team league, it's maybe the fourth or fifth best. But certainly, they took it to the Blue Bombers. And I was at that game in IG Field. The Bombers had won 12 straight games there. I did not anticipate that the Bombers were going to lose, nor did I anticipate that game was going to be close. And yet, not only in a very raucous environment. I mean, there's 31,000 fans screaming their heads off at IG Field. And I've seen a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of opposing teams come in and, and that, they can't get over the crowd. They just can't deal with the noise. They put their tail between their legs and the Bombers just feast. That is not what we saw this past weekend. And I give the Alouettes a lot of credit. That defensive line set the tone. They gave the offensive line fits. And it wasn't like there was a particular blocker along the offensive line where you go, oh my goodness, they're getting killed right up the gut. Or, oh, this offensive line is getting killed off the right edge. No, it was coming from everywhere. Let's remember, this, this offensive line in Winnipeg, well, yes, they lost Drew Desjardins to the NFL. Yes, they lost Michael Couture, rating CFL All-Star center to injury. They've still got three perennial All-Stars on that line, two at tackle in Stanley Bryan and Jermarcus Hardrick, and one at guard in Patrick Neufeld, right from, from, you know, in the heartland of Saskatchewan. So certainly the Alouettes deserve credit. That defensive line had its best game of the year, and that's one of the biggest reasons they were able to complete that upset at IG Field. Arlen Bruce the third is watching, and this is my final question for you from AB. He says, uh, Nathan Rourke plays like a young Andrew Luck or Drew Brees. I respect your football acumen, John, so I wonder what you think the immediate future for Nathan Rourke is. He's in the final year of his contract, correct? What, how do you see this unfolding over the next two to three years in the football career of Nathan Rourke? Well, he is under contract with the BC Lions for 2023. However, mm. there is a window he can utilize just as, you know, Devontae Dedman did this past offseason, a number of CFL players did this past offseason to pursue the NFL. And I think it would absolutely be in his best interest to do so. Here's why. Nathan Rourke's contract tops out around the $80,000 mark next year. That's Canadian, of course. Even if he just sat on a practice roster down south, he'd be making a lot more money than he would be in Canada. This is not like quarterbacks in the past, you know, guys like Bolivar by Mitchell, Michael Riley, where, you know, they could go down South potentially, but if they land on a PR, they're going to make less money than they would have making 500, 600, $700,000 in Canada, right? From a financial standpoint, Nathan Rourke is only going to do better in the NFL than he is on the current deal that he's on his rookie deal in the CFL. The other factors, let's say Nathan Rourke was down to the NFL. And by the way, I absolutely think he will get that chance. I've talked to personnel people who say basically the only way he doesn't get a look is if something truly disastrous happens this year, including an injury, knock on wood. Of course, we don't, we don't hope that will happen. And I, I do think he will get signed. The question of where, you know, I, I think where he goes, what the fit is, what team he's with, who he's surrounded by, that will all play in too much to speculate as to what he could accomplish in the NFL. But I'll say this, assuming he goes down there in 2023, let's say it doesn't go well and he comes back to the CFL for 2024, he's going to be a CFL free agent at that point. And I can think of about nine CFL teams that would probably love to go out and sign Nathan Work. So even if he goes down to the NFL in 2023 and doesn't have any success, he's going to make bank coming up to the CFL in 2024, whether or not he returns to that childhood team of his, the BC Lions. Well, he's certainly uh, earned it, and he's been fun to watch. I can't let you go without asking you this uh, quickly the answer to your childhood crush. Who was your first crush, John? That's what the viewers have latched on to here for a topic today. It was actually you, Roddy. How about that? <laughs> Am I that old? Am I that old? <laughs> well, thank you. I'm very flattered and red-faced. John, keep up the great work, man. Loving it. Enjoy the football. Thanks for having me on, Roddy. Anytime. John Hodge from 3downnation.com joining us from the Manitoba capital. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, 
hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.